So you want to improve your audio system and install new speakers into your vehicle, but unfortunately the new speakers aren't going to fit the stock mounting position. So that means that we're gonna to have to make speaker adapters. There are many times that a speaker's size may be unusual and require a custom one-of-a-kind adapter. The perfect custom-made adapters will not only allow us to mount our new speaker, but they're going to be strong and incorporate vehicle design features that will allow us to achieve optimal sound quality. I'm currently working on a build for a Jeep Grand Cherokee and I need to install these Focal KX2s. The adapters that I'm making in this video are made from half inch acrylic. They have tapped holes for stainless steel hardware and they even allow us to flush mount the speaker into the adapter for additional door panel clearance. Now unfortunately I did come across a few problems while I was making these that you would also be likely to encounter in making your own custom adapters. So I'm going to talk about those issues and how to overcome them. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Let's get into it with removing the door panel. I'm going to talk about some of the first things I look for when doing this type of install. <laughs> All right, so I've got the door panel removed here. I apologize if you hear a little bit of a noise. That's my heater running. It's currently extremely cold here right now, but there are a few things I notice right away when I take off this door panel that I know I'm going to want to address during this install. Number one, this is pretty much true for all car manufacturers. These things that hold into the actual door itself, they have a tendency to vibrate. And even though they are slightly more tight once they're applied in the vehicle, I still like to wrap some tape around these before I put them in. I've been using this stuff lately here from JK Tapes. I'll wrap it around the circular part of this fastener and then put it back in and it eliminates that potential vibration noise. I like to do the same thing anywhere where there's a temporary type connection. Using tape to isolate the two surfaces from one another is nice because it's nice and thin. I'll go around on the door panel and I do things like this. I can tell just by tapping that that would likely be a spot that I would have resonating and making noise. So I'll kind of push this up and I'll put a piece of tape inside of there too, just to stop that vibration noise. I'll of course apply normal sound treatment materials to the door panel as well, but this isn't the point of this video. In this video, we want to get that speaker adapter made. Here's the inside of the door panel. So the same thing, I'll go around and check for different vibrations. I will isolate those. But again, we want to focus on making this speaker ring. Let's get the factory speaker removed. Now the first thing I want to check is I want to make sure that our new speakers that we're going to use are going to fit. Hold this in here. I've got plenty of mounting depth to that bracket back there, which is kind of hard to see, but it looks like we should definitely be good to go. Something else that you want to check is when the panel is installed in the vehicle, you want to shine a light through these holes here and look about how far it is from this surface to where the existing speaker mount is. And in this case, it's about that much, so I should have plenty of room for the new speaker to move. My new speaker here is quite obviously a different shape, so I need to make a speaker adapter bracket, and I'm going to do so using plastic materials but I want to start with making a template out of wood because plastic is expensive and this way I could just make sure everything is going to fit the way I intend it to before I transfer it to the plastic. And now I'm here over at the router table. If you're not familiar with a router, what it does is it spins a bit. We have a variety of different bits that we can use. And this bit that I'm using right here is a flush trim bit. So what it's going to do is it has a bearing on top and that bearing is going to ride against the surface of the speaker and it's going to transfer that cutting profile to the piece of wood below. Within the table, I can raise and lower that bit. So I adjust it so that the bearing is riding against that surface. Let's make our cut. And with that, we now have this perfectly cut outside shape that is going to fit 
right here. Now I need to cut a circle inside here. Once again, I'm gonna be using the router and I have this template from Mobile Solutions. This is part of the Axis Shape Creator Kit. I'm gonna use this in order to make my perfect cutout hole, but first I need to make some measurements on here because I wanna draw some lines and get the approximate center. To hold the template to the piece of wood, I'm using double-sided template tape, and then I'm using the router once again with the flush trim bit to copy that shape. So check this out. With that hole made, it now perfectly matches this speaker. So the speaker can mount to this adapter plate, but Guess what guys, I did come across an issue. If you look right here on the piece of material, you can see that it's pretty thin from right here where my pinky is to right here. And once I make this out of acrylic, it will probably be strong enough as acrylic is a nice strong material, but I am concerned that it is a little thin. Even though it does look big in comparison to my hand, rest assured if we get a tape measure close to it, it's really only about a half inch from outside to inside. So what I did is I brought the adapter back over here to the vehicle and I see that when I hold it in position that there is some room to expand this adapter ring. I can make it a larger outside perimeter. I need another piece of material here because I'm going to make a new adapter ring. Let's go with this. This isn't really that big a deal because I can still use the work that I've already done and I'm going to stick this piece to this piece and then what I'm going to do, where is it? I'm going to use one of these oversized router bits and I'm going to run the bearing against my existing piece and transfer the new oversized profile to the bottom piece. Now the width here and here is much more beefy. In fact, it's about the width of my hand. The other thing that's nice is when I put the speaker in, now I have a little bit of extra material on the outside, whereas before the speaker almost overhung a slight amount. This is good because I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna do it yet, but I might flush the speaker slightly down into the material and that gives me a little bit of extra space to flush that down in. Now, of course, there's one more problem here though. I went to test fit this in now that it's a little bit larger and you'll see this little nub here. I'm guessing this nub is so that it's easier to install the speakers in the factory. They can kind of just locate it on that nub and then shoot in the different screws instead of having to precisely line it up. But we could either get rid of this nub or I can just modify my adapter and make a slight little cutout. I think I'm gonna modify my adapter. I really only need to remove a small amount of material. So I've stuck this template on here. I'm gonna notch that out for clearance. So I've got my notch there now. I've just set the speaker on top here and carefully lined it up because I wanna transfer these mounting holes to my template before I start copying the things to plastic. I've got a hole gauge here. I'll put a link to this and all the other tools that I use in this video down in the video description. And I'm going to take this screw. This is the factory screw that holds in the speaker and I'm gonna size it. It's 13 64 So I'm gonna use that drill bit in order to drill these holes. With those holes made, I wanted to do a little test fit in the vehicle, so I bolted this into place just to make sure everything's lined up. We are good to go. So now I can start transferring this overall shape to a piece of acrylic. The acrylic that I'm gonna be using for this project is this beautiful black acrylic here. I've already rough cut it to shape using a jigsaw, and I do that because acrylic is definitely a little bit more of a challenge to machine than MDF. I want my router to only have to remove a slight amount of material, so I only leave just a little bit outside of each of the edges. You'll notice that I also left the protective paper on while I was doing that jigsaw process just to avoid scratching this surface, but now I need to pull it off in order to start doing the router process. Real quick, before we get to that, I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, New Concepts. When we are putting this much effort into making the perfect speaker adapters, we of course want the signal between our head unit and the amplifiers to be perfect as well. And that's why I like using these guys right here, the New Concepts Clarity RCA wires. 
These twisted pair signal cables feature three different layers of shielding for optimal noise rejection. Another thing that is nice is the amount of different options that are available. Several different lengths, a two channel and four channel option, even Y adapters. All of these options allow you to keep all of your RCA wires throughout an install the same. The next time that you need RCA wires or any power wires or fuse blocks, etc., be sure to check out newconcepts.com. You can also check them out down in the video description. Let's get into cutting this acrylic. So first I remove that backing paper off the top surface, and now I'm going to apply the template tape. And for working with the acrylic, I really want to make sure that I apply enough template tape that it's really going to get a strong hold. And I really push this template as hard as I can down onto that piece of acrylic to hold the two together. When it comes to cutting acrylic on the router, there's two things that are really important. One is to use the right router bit. Here I have a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit that is specifically made for cutting plastic materials and it really excels on acrylic. I'll put a link for you guys down in the video description. Another thing is I have to make sure I am as safe as possible. Acrylic, when it grabs in a router, it really grabs hard because it's not like wood. It can't really fragment away as easily. So I really wanna make sure that I'm keeping my fingers and hands safe away from the router bit. So I'm going to use this router shield and I'm going to stick my template to it so I can manipulate this piece while I'm routing. Using the shield ensures that my hands are a safe distance away from the bit, and it also gives me a lot more control over the cut. I can use a lot more care, which leads to a better edge cut, a better result. Let's fire up the dust collection, turn on the router, and get this cut. With that operation complete, I've transferred the shape of the template, but there's something else I wanna do. Remember I mentioned I wanna flush the speaker down in? I'm actually going to cut into the material a half inch with this rabbiting bit, but I wanna cut up into the material by an eighth of an inch. So I'll check my gauge here. I've got it zeroed there. Let's put it on top of the router bit. It's about 2000 soft, so I'll make a slight adjustment when I'm not holding the camera, but an eighth of an inch perfectly up. So here's what that pass looks like. And in a second here, I'll show you guys what the speaker actually looks like in there, but I don't wanna remove it from this quite yet because I have one more operation that I wanna do. And that is here on the chamfer bit. This chamfer bit will cut the corner off at a 45 degree angle, and that will help to soften up the edges of this piece of material, just so it's not a hard line. It gives it a little bit more of a finished look. Let's have a look here. That is gonna look good, especially once I get this protective paper removed. I don't wanna remove it quite yet because I'm gonna flip it over and we have to drill those holes. I've removed the paper from the ring. I've got this really nice glossy looking appearance, but this ring is super strong. This half inch acrylic is no joke. Here is what the speaker looks like in the adapter ring. What do you guys think? Now, obviously I need a way for the speaker to actually bolt to the adapter. To do that, since this is acrylic and it machines really nicely, I'm gonna drill some holes and then tap them, which will add the threads directly into the adapter. I start with picking out a fastener that I'm gonna use. In this case, I'm gonna be using these half inch eight by 32 screws that fit perfectly perfectly inside of this mounting hole. These are also stainless steel. To mark the exact position of these holes, I'm going to orient the speaker where I want it, and then I'm gonna use one of these, a transfer punch, which I can give a light hit with a hammer, and it will transfer the center, the exact center of that mounting hole to the acrylic. Next, I have this handy drill and tap kit, and if I look at the numbers here, I can see this is the tap for the 832, and I also know which drill bit it corresponds to, so I'm gonna drill the hole first, and then I'm gonna carefully tap it using the tap. So check it out guys, the finished speaker adapter. You can see it looks really nice with this nice flushed in speaker. We have that nice edge chamfer, so it gives it a real nice finished look. We've got that clearance for that little knob, and then we've got our mounting holes for mounting it in the vehicle. Now I do of course need to do a bunch of sound treatment to the door panel, adding some sound deadening materials. And then there's little things like, see this gasketing material around the stock speaker? That helps to really keep it sealed in there and fully take advantage of this door cavity. I'm gonna be adding this speaker gasketing 
tape to this surface here. That way when I do push in my new speaker and speaker adapter, I get that same nice seal that matches the OEM design. There we go, a little bit something like that. And here we have it. This is what this speaker looks like fully installed with our new speaker adapter. Now along with doing sound treatment and wiring in an upcoming video, I want to show you guys how I'm going to mount these tweeters. These tweeters are far too large to fit into the factory position, so I'm going to have to do some modifications to this factory sail panel, a little bit of bodywork, fiberglass type stuff to get this guy to fit in. What do you guys think? If you have any questions about the process for making these adapters, or if you just want to drop me a line, I love reading those, so I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. If you're new here, this channel is all about mastering car audio and learning learning how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. You can check out some of my other past videos here, and I'd love to have you as a subscriber. A special thanks to New Concepts, along with Bernard, John, Brian, Ali, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping make these videos possible. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you soon.